Thank you for joining me again at Completing Christ as we continue to walk through the book of Colossians. Man, we spent the last several weeks in chapter 1 just walking so, through truth after truth after truth. As Paul <coughs> speaks truth in this letter to the church at Colossae because of false teachings that had entered the church. And we spent the last couple of times talking about, in verse 9, about Paul says, Look, I've heard these things about you. And I've been praying that you understand that this relationship with Jesus, just through this relationship with Jesus, you begin to understand the will of God and that he grants you spiritual wisdom and spiritual understanding so that you may walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, so that you begin to understand this relationship radically changes your walk and that you please him in every respect in all areas of my life and that's what we looked at last time that it's not a detail of my life and your life is not important to the lord and that he does not want to radically change to bring him much honor and much glory to to where that every area of my life begins to to line up with his will and his purpose for my life and the same thing with you that every detail of your life begins to line up with what God desires to do in and through your life. We're going to pick up in that same passage. and we're going to, I'm going to go back and read verse 10. It says this, So that your walk may be worthy of the Lord, to please Him in, in all respects. And the last part of that verse says this, it says, Bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Bearing fruit. That God through this relationship with Jesus and his presence in our life through the Holy Spirit begins to produce good works in and through our life. That God begins to produce fruit in our life that we cannot produce ourselves. The things you got, the thing you got to remember about fruit is that fruit is not manufactured. Fruit is produced. And through this relationship with Jesus, that God begins to do a work in our life and begins to work in our lives and through our lives and producing what we could never produce ourselves. You see, oftentimes we get we get this thinking that I have to do good things in order for God to accept me. That I do good works so I can be accepted by God. That's not right. That's not the truth. You see, good works come from a relationship with Jesus. Good works don't make me right before him. Jesus makes me right before God. And then through this relationship with Jesus, he begins to do in and through my life what I'm incapable of doing to produce good works, to produce things that bring him honor and to and bring him much, much glory. And people need begin to notice the change of what's happening in my life and then through my life, bearing fruit in every good work, God producing what only God can produce. And then he says this, increasing in the knowledge of God, increasing in my understanding of the truth of who God is and what God desires to do in and through my life through this relationship with Jesus. The picture here is continuing to grow. You know, we never arrive. It's a lifelong journey of God radically changing our life through this relationship with Jesus that we continually grow in our relationship with him. Are you growing? Are you growing in your relationship with Jesus? Are you growing in your knowledge and your understanding of who he is, of who God is, of who the word says he is, of how the word says he wants to use your life to, to make him known, to advance his kingdom, to be used to produce what only God can produce? Well, how do I grow? How do I grow? I grow by spending time with him. We grow in relationship with others by spending time with them. It's the same way with God. We've got to spend time in his presence. You see, I've got to spend time in the word of God. You know, if I'm going to grow, I'm going to have to spend time in the Word. I'm going to have to value His Word. I'm going to have to treasure His Word. I'm going to have to get in His Word. As the psalmist says in Psalm 119, beginning with verse 9, How can a young man keep his way pure? By keeping it according to your word. With all my heart I've sought you. Do not let me wander from your commands. Your word have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Do I treasure the word of God? Because see, if I treasure it, 
I'm going to value it. It's going to be important to me. And as I spend time in it, God takes it and, and uses it in my life to continually teach me and grow me. So part of this growing process is spending time in the Word of God. Another important aspect of growing is time in prayer. You know, Paul tells the church at Colossae in chapter 4, he says, look, you got to be devoted to prayer. How devoted am I? How devoted are you to spending time in the presence of God, in conversation with Him, praying, crying out to Him, asking Him, God, what do you desire to do in and through my life? Asking Him, God, grow me. Teach me. God, help me to understand you and your ways and the truth of your word better and better and better. God, give me more insight. Give me more wisdom. Give me more understanding. You see, if I'm going to grow, if I'm going to increase in knowledge, I got to spend time in the word. I got to spend time in prayer. I need other people. I need Christian community. I need church. I need a small group. Man, I need other people in my life. As Hebrews teaches in Hebrews 10, we don't need to forsake the assembling of ourselves together. Why? Because we need each other. I want to encourage you, man, be a part of a local church. Be a part of a small group or a disciple-making group because we need each other in this growth process. Man, we learn from each other. And one of the other things I think is vitally important in this process, and I mentioned this before, is accountability. Man, I need other people in my life to hold me accountable to the truth, to doing the right things. Proverbs 27, 17, that... One man sharpens another, iron sharpens iron, like one man sharpens another. We need each other. You see, Paul says, look, listen to me, church. Listen to me, church. He says, look, God wants to produce in and through your life, through this relationship with Jesus, fruit. He wants to produce in and through your life what only God, he can produce, what only God himself can produce. And it's a lifelong journey of growing in this relationship with Jesus. Man, look, I got saved when I was 16. I'm 65 now. And man, I'm still on this journey of growing in this relationship with Jesus. And, and that growth process should bring us great, great joy. Man, spending time in the word ought to bring us great joy. In conversation through prayer should be a glory glorious time in his presence and and realizing the importance of other people man we need one another we need church we need a small group of people to hold us accountable to the truth my prayer is that we'll continue to grow we'll continue to increase in our knowledge and understanding of who he is what he desires to do in and through our life as we allow him to radically change our life. Have a blessed day and let Jesus be Jesus in you today.